possible, chances are you are a high-level busy executive coach, and maybe you're just a little less busy right now because of the epitome. Uh, we know you love your job and you love to help your clients. And regardless of if you are a fractional CMO, an EOS implementer, a Vistage chair, a combination of those, or if you are a high-level consultant, most likely what you're doing for your client is helping them grow. And if I can get to my next slide, that's it. So you're helping them grow. And regardless of how successful you are, you're also probably trying to grow your own business. So this webinar is for you, as you will learn how a new certification in persuasion called the persuasion, the certified persuasion professional can help you scientifically grow. So here is the agenda that we have for you today. First, we will share what we believe is the main issue in the life of a top level executive coach like you. Then you will hear about Neuromap, the only scientific model of persuasion. This is a scientific part of our services and it's anchored in brain science. In fact, it is the reason behind all the awards we have received like the Vista Speaker of the Year Award in 2008 or the American Marketing Association Next Big Thing in Marketing. Then you will hear that for many of the client, this can bring very rapid growth. And also that it's proven. In fact, we've been working on this for 20 years and we have over 26 pages of unrequested feedback. Finally, we will describe the certification program together with the client's programs that come with it. So the objective of this certification is to help you become to sales and marketing what EOS implementers have become to operating small, medium-sized businesses. So let's start with the lives of executive coaches like you. Typically, what we've learned is that you have two lives. In your first life, you're trying to sell your services. And in the second life, you're trying to deliver those services. And the very first life here, selling the services, is time consuming, it's difficult, it's energy draining, it's somewhat empirical, and the only reward is actually when you close the prospect. So for most consultants, that does not bring them happiness. On the other side, when you deliver those services, it's time control. In other words, you manage the agenda. It's relatively easy. It generates energy for yourself and for your client. It's based on your own experience, so you have a process with it. And as a result, it's very rewarding. In other words, people who do that, the consultants that do that, really enjoy this. So we at SalesBrain, we have been working on the science of part one for over 20 years so that at the end of the day, you can experience happiness in selling and you can, re you can experience a higher level of energy by following a very simple step-by-step -step process. So this science is about persuasion. And after doing this for 20 years and after having a lot of people ask us, can you make what you've done available to us? We finally decided to create a certification program. So let me ask you a question here. What have these numbers in common? 250,000, 200,000, 20 slash 800, 188, 26, 12, two, one, and one. Do you know what these numbers have in common? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So these numbers are all about a proven persuasion model. 250,000 is the number of books that we've sold over the last 20 years. In fact, we've trained 200,000 executives, including at least 20,000 CEOs. We've done this for 20 years and we count about 800 clients. And these are some of the names that you may recognize, which have been our clients. All this persuasion model is based on the fact that human beings are afflicted by what's called cognitive biases, and there are 188 of those biases. In fact, we've done business in 26 countries. Our books have been translated in 12 languages. And again, these biases come from the fact that your customers, when you're trying to sell to them, they don't use one brain, they actually use two brains. And we created a model in one image, we call that Neuromap, that explains the science of persuasion, which again is at the core 
of what you need to do if you want to expect growth. So as a result, this proven persuasion model is your number one option if you want to choose to grow your own business and if you want to grow the business of your own customers. Christoph. Learning persuasion is a journey. And when you go on a journey, you need a map. You need a map that guides you towards your destination. And your destination is that you want to persuade. So we have created a theory of persuasion that we will very quickly discuss today. We have unveiled the science of persuasion. More importantly, we are able to guide companies around the world through a process that delivers the right chemistry in all the messages. Now, persuasion is a challenging exercise. The reason, and one of many, is that there are lots and lots of messages that are attempting to persuade your brain. In advertising alone, people are spraying thousands of messages. Only a few will work. And when we decided to investigate the science of persuasion, we were confronted with a lot of complexity. Persuasion is a challenging subject. Why? There are lots of theories, lots of research papers. There are lots of books. Fortunately, our last book, we believe, is the first and only book that has taken in into account the irrationality of people because we have so many of those biases. As a result, because this field is so complex, it frightens many, including you possibly, to be in front of a group. This challenge can be overcome if you are using a known process, a process that is based on properties your messages need to have. We call the persuasion code. The persuasion code is being able to deliver, next Patrick, to deliver the right sequence to the brain so that you can grab attention, you can distribute energy, motivation, and decision making in one delivery. Next. So that you achieve, of course, the effect you want every single time you are either selling or engaging people into a process. You want them to be excited. Now, here we're showing an example where that excitement happens face to face, but our method can be distributed and used across all sorts of messages delivered also online. Briefly, let's introduce you to the theory of persuasion. The good news with theory of persuasion in our case, and I teach persuasion theory, is that it's simple. There are four variables to that theory, four factors that will impact your ability to persuade anyone. Number one, do they have a pain? A pain that will eliminate the wondering of how important and urgent we need to grab from the pain. Two, you need to not spray and pray all the reasons why people should buy from you. You need to distill them into a maximum of three claims. Number three, you need to be able to provide evidence to those claims. We call that the gain demonstration. And number four, as we have fully demonstrated and deployed for 20 years, you need to target a specific area in the brain, which is underneath the cortex called the primal brain. Let's look at a very simple example anyone can relate to. Imagine you're selling water. We argue that your probability of selling water will depend on people being thirsty. Number two, on having unique claims that you can brag about in your water. It could be the size of the bottle, it could be the color of the bottle. You need evidence, one of which could be a taste of that water. And more importantly, to reach more people to sell and distribute your message, you need to have them encounter a message that is primal brain friendly, mostly visual and intuitive. All of that leads into the theory of having a dual system of brain impact. Next. In our model, we have been able to decode exactly where persuasion is happening. And the primal brain is front and center of that effect. There are two systems in the brain that are depicted into this slide. At the top, 
sits the brain that is the most evolved, the most sophisticated. At the bottom is the survival brain. What we've been able to establish is the dominance of the primal brain in our decision-making process. Also popularized by a brilliant man, Daniel Kahneman, in this book, Thinking Fast and Slow, may be familiar to some of you. In 2007, five days basically later than our own delivery of the model, Mr. Kahneman confirmed that system one being the primal brain and system two being the rational brain, that the true decision maker is always the primal brain or system one. Here are a few important aspects of differences between the primal and the rational. The primal is fast, but doesn't have the computing power to process complexity. It's very old. It's been operating for millions of years. It only understands the present, and therefore you cannot convince the primal brain if you forecast and put all your message benefits into the future. It's always on. It's driven by the importance of vigilance. Why do we put pain into our equation? Because if you don't mention pain, the primal brain is not gonna be interested. It's not urgent. It seeks familiarity. It's mostly automated. And of course, you have very little control over it. So let's demonstrate your primal brain in action because this is all theoretical, but you need to really experience it for yourself. So I'd like to do two quick experiments to demonstrate that your primal brain actually overrides everything you know, everything you do, everything you perceive. So the first experiment is a little trick on your visual system. And it demonstrates one of the 188 cognitive biases, if you want, which is that you cannot even trust your eyes. So in this experiment, the question is very simple. You have two squares. One is labeled A, the other one is labeled B. Which one is darker? Now, most people believe that square A is darker than B, but that's not true. In reality, the square labeled A is exactly the same intensity of gray as the square labeled B but your brain tells you otherwise. So I'm gonna to have to demonstrate it, and I am now demonstrating it by bringing a single shade of gray. So when I remove it, yeah, you can tell that A is exactly the same color as B, but when, I re you know, when it's not there, everything in your brain tells you otherwise. So I'm here to tell you that you cannot even trust your own brain to give you a, an accurate image of the world out there. Let's do a quick other experiment, and by the way, this experiment is what got the Nobel Prize to Kahneman. So you're gonna to have to make two bets, and in each bet you will have two options. In the first bet, you have the option to either win $5,000 for sure, or you can win 10,000 or win nothing, and we're gonna let a coin decide which uh, is which. Now, from a statistical perspective, they are equivalent because you have 50% chances in option B to win $10,000. So you're free to choose, Make, make your choice. So if you were in a room with me and you would raise your hand, when we asked this question, and Kahneman demonstrated it, about 95% of the population chooses option one. So hopefully you, you, know, you are voting with the majority. But now here is where it becomes interesting. You have to make a second bet, and this, in this second bet you have two options. Either you can lose $5,000 for sure, or you can lose twice as much, or lose nothing, and we will let a coin decide. So I'll, I give you a couple of seconds to process this test, and Kahneman found out that about 95 to 97% of the population would choose option B. And as you can tell, it doesn't make any sense. If Homo sapiens was a rational species, at least we would be symmetrical, but we are not. And in fact, this has been called the loss aversion bias, and some scientists have even been able to quantify this asymmetry in huge much judgment. And the key number is actually 2.3. And this 2.3 explains why it's difficult to sell. Because we all find that we love to buy, but we hate to sell. Why? Because it's difficult to sell. And it's difficult to sell because your customers, they have to pay for your services. And that creates a tremendous amount of tension in your, in your brain. So you have to override that negative tension with positive, which is linked to the value of what you're selling. Now, 
because of the dominance of the primal brain, you have to follow certain guidelines to speak the language of the primal brain. And we identify six properties that will come next. Walking through those properties, you'll realize that they're all based on the dominance of the primal brain. For instance, we expect the message to be personal. We expect it especially to reawake or reenact a pain. We have a bias, a primal bias for seeking to protect ourselves from threats. We also, in the primal brain, expect the decision to be simple. Therefore, contrasting in your message what life is before you and what's life now is the simplest, most effective way to seek and get a decision. Your claims, your benefits are supposed to create that contrast. Tangible is the property of making it simple. While we have the capacity to think, we have the brains to think. We don't want to. And the early interaction with your message needs to be cognitively fluent. You cannot expect people to think first. They'll think after the primal brain has been activated. Your message needs to be memorable by making it really strong at the beginning and at the end and by limiting the number of claims to three. Memorization happens way below our level of consciousness. Therefore, your message must be optimized to be memorable. The visual sense is the default sense the primal brain uses to draw meaning. Don't expect words to have influence on the primal brain. Expect pictures to do. And the last one, and not the least, is you need to create emotional cocktail. We are guided by our emotions. They improve our attention. They improve our attention and memorization. Next. So as we have introduced now the two brain system and the, the six stimuli, we're gonna begin a presentation rapid as it may be of the process that we walk our clients through, which is to identify and, and, and do so ideally in groups. What are the answers to three critical questions? And Patrick will start that process with the diagnosis of the pain. All right, so four steps. Let's start with step number one, diagnose the pain. Why do you need to diagnose the pain? Because fundamentally, the primal brain of your audience is selfish. So they don't care about your product and services. They only care about the fact that your product and services might eliminate some pain in their brain. And the problem is, most of the time, they're not even aware of those pain. Now, when we talk about pain, pain, people go, yeah, we understand it. It's kind of the needs of the customers. No, it's the pain, not the need. And there's a very big difference between the two. Let me show you an example here. This is an ad by Sony. Everyone in favor of a lighter projector, raise your hand. As you can see, 70% of the message to sell that video projector is about the pain. It is not about the product itself. And there is no obvious connection between the projector and the pain that they are addressing. So here is the issue with the pain. We call that the pain paradox, which is that when people tell you, I want pizza, in reality, people have no pain about the pizza. You know what their pain is? They have the anxiety of not knowing when the pain will arrive. You want a proof of that? Well, let's talk about Domino's. As you know, Domino's became number one in the pizza business, and their slogan was, or still is, 30 minutes or less, or it's free. Yes, the slogan of Domino has nothing to do with the pizza. It's 30 minutes or less, or it's free. So Domino identified that the number one pain was that anxiety of not knowing, and then they developed a whole business which is based on the assumption that if you buy your pizza with them, that anxiety will be eliminated. Let's talk about another very famous company, that's Starbucks. Do you think that Starbucks is in the coffee business? No, they are not. In fact, the CEO of Starbucks says that people spend half their life at home, the other half in the office, and the fundamental pain that Starbucks eliminates is they provide a transition between the two. And at Starbucks, they call that the third place. We already saw that when people tell you, I want a video projector, in reality, their pain has nothing to do with it. Their pain is they are afraid of being exhausted. So the question becomes, when your client you know, tell you, I need your product or services, or when they are trying to sell their own product and services, in reality, what is the pain of the people that's gonna buy this product? And in our process, 
we have come up with a series of exercises. So I'm just going to show you some of these exercises related to the pain exercise. But as you will see, we will repeat those exercises then for each of our steps. So Patrick, I just want to remind you, we're about 10 minutes away from the close of the webinar. So let's make sure we go. Sure. So first, you need to list those top pains. And they need to be negative emotions, not wants. Then you need to rank them according to the, how aware people are, how urgent they are, how intense, and how many people are afflicted. Then you need to figure out what are the best questions that you need to ask to diagnose these pains. And that's the end of that first step. So let's talk about step number two now, which is differentiate your claims. And why do you need to do that? You need to do that because the primal brain is sensitive to contrast. And sadly enough, a typical website or a typical message when people are trying to sell, it's always about who you are and what you do. Instead, we will recommend that first, you need to focus on the why, and then you talk about the what. So in reality, we teach our customers, we help people write a book. And this book is titled, Why You Should Buy From Us. And guess what? In the table of content of that book, we're going to find only three chapters. Why? Because the brain is optimized to remember concepts when they are grouped in three. So you can only have three chapters in your book. And each of the claims will be the chapter of, will be the title of those chapters. So I want to give you some examples of claims so that you really understand what the concept is. The first one is for a law firm. We've worked with them for many years. Now they're in the law business, but their claims are protect your time, protect your dime, protect your peace of mind. So they are now no longer in the law business, if you want. They're in the protection business. Here is another example for a company called Matworks. And they do various floorings for large uh, grocery stores. And they quiet your store, quiet your bus, quiet your day. And this is the kind of growth that they have achieved in a super competitive marketplace, 20% per year. Here is another example. It's a company called Innovative Office Solutions. Their claims are expect response, expect reduction, expect relief. And the CEO, Jennifer Smith, expressed how this has helped us multiply our business seven times in seven years. Another example by a company called Code Blue. Their claims are extraordinary speed, extraordinary science, extraordinary service. And because their sales cycle was much shorter, the growth came much faster. You know, they grew about 50% in the first year after endorsing those times. So here is the claim exercise that you would need to do with your customers and even for yourself. You, need, you would need to identify your top three claims. You cannot make more than three claims. They need to be therapeutic, original, and probable. Of course, you cannot do this in a vacuum. You need to know intimately your competitors' claims. Then you need to wordsmith them because there is a, a bias called the rhyming as a reason bias, which means some, when something sounds good, like pain, claim, gain, people like it, they remember it, and they believe it's true. And then finally, when you put all these three claims all together in a sentence that we, we are the first or the only or the best company that does this, this should become your mission statement. So at the end of the day, we highly recommend that people differentiate because if I ask you to choose an apple here, it becomes very difficult. But all of a sudden, if I turn off the contrast, it becomes a lot easier. The third step in that process is demonstrate the gain. And you need to do that because the primal brain wants tangible proof. It's the third stimulus. And we found out that the whole issue of the value proposition can be summarized in one matrix called the value matrix. In fact, there are three kinds of value when somebody buys something from you. It can be financial, strategic, and personal. And we found that there are only four ways you can prove it. You can prove it by using a customer case, a demo, data, and a vision, or a vision. And those are organized into decreasing strength. So here is the pain exercise that you need to drive. And that pain exercise, you will need to do it for each of your claims. You would need to unveil all the benefits or the subclaims of that claim. Then for each benefit, you would need to quantify the financial, strategic, and personal dimension. And then you need to prove it with a customer case demo data or a vision. And then you would repeat that for every sub claims and repeat that for each one. So at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. Were you able to demonstrate the gain? Or in this case, if you're selling a program to lose weight, the loss. And then the, fi the final step, the deliver to the primal brain becomes a lot richer. This is what you can now see on the right side of the chart. And as you can see, our model becomes very, very fine grain, and it would take a lot longer than half an hour to explain all these elements. But let's switch gears now, and let's talk about 
the program that we suggest that you know people would resell under this certification. So this is the flow chart, and I'm going to explain very quickly how this program works. But first, let's talk about the deliverables that people can expect if you are going to sell them our services. So the deliverable would first give them a new mission statement highlighting the why, the client. Then they would come up with a one-page document that would be an executive summary of the book, Why Buy from them. They would get a new level of pitch, and then they would get a whole series of blueprints to allow them to create an absolute and complete messaging alignment, because we find that in most cases, the reason why companies today are not growing fast enough is because there is not a complete alignment on what they should say to convince more prospects. So the program works like this. We ask all our consultants to charge a minimum of $5,000 of consulting days per consulting day. And the core of the program is a four day program over a four month period. And it's focused on what people need to say. So four days at $5,000, we recommend that people charge a minimum of $20,000 for our customers. Then we offer three options to this program. The first one is an option to do actual marketing. And we use also non-traditional normal marketing techniques to do that. And the price of those research programs start at $10,000. The second option is a three-day program over three months. It's on the how you should say it. So it's another opportunity for you to make $15,000. And at the end of the day, the third option is to create persuasive creatives. And they range from $6,000 upwards of $35,000. So the first program, the core of the program on this chart here is the first, first, uh, the first four days. The optional research is in green here. So either we recommend to conduct additional research or we reuse the client's existing research. So this is here. And there are five no marketing modalities, Christophe, if you want to describe them. Yes, so the reason we've been able to decode the part of the brain that is dominant in persuasion is not because we were just doing academic research. For 20 years, we've used methods that are known as neuromarketing methods. These are modalities that go beyond what people can articulate. As humans, we are actually quite bad at explaining how we feel. But we have software that can help us decode facial expressions so we know by scanning people's face in front of a website or in front of a pitch, we know to the extent that the software tells us if they're happy or sad or frustrated. Another modality which is quite unique to Cells Brain is we have software to decode voice emotions. Yes, from time to time, we have to be able to engage in conversations with customers, but we want to make sure through that software that we can really tell if they're happy or sad or upset. Another modality is that we have software and technology to record where the eyes are going and for how long. We can even measure pupil dilation. Another modality is that we go as far as measuring skin moisture, Patrick, as well as brain waves on people's brains. So as you can see, we have additional tools to supplement the process of diagnosing the pain. All right. So that was the first option that Christophe described. The second option is what's circled in red here, is the additional three days to really align the sales team on what they should say to further convince. And finally, the third option is to create creatives, persuasive creatives. And we've been able throughout the years to standardize seven creatives that have a very strong persuasive effect. And this is what's in blue here in the chart. So what kind of tools now would the people that get our certification would receive? So first of all, they would have access to all our IP and that includes copyright, registered trademarks and regular trademarks. So, you know, everything which is in the book, all our binders, all the posters, etc. Then we have these web-based predictive eye tracking reports, which can tell us where the eyes of a potential prospect go. We use GroupSmart, which is a computer-edited brainstorming platform to create instant alignment. The five node marketing technique research that Christophe just uh, described. Seven persuasive creatives, that's the list. Then, of course, an access to a growing network of high-level certified persuasion professionals 
this is where people are located right now. Again, the program was just launched in January and we already have six people that have uh, signed up for this. Then, of course, we're building a certain level of credibility with our TED Talk, our LinkedIn course, and many other um, elements, if you want. And then finally, the title of Certified Persuasion Professional. So those are the tools. Now, to become qualified, you need to have at least five years of executive coaching experience. You need to have the ability to build consensus among high-powered executives and align those people on the notions of pain, claim, gain. And of course, you will need to have a certain desire to learn new brain and persuasion science. Now to certify, you will need to attend at your expense two regular sessions, then a session specific for coaches. We recommend that you read and summarize six scientific books, which are the basis of our model. Then that you deliver our content in small self-recorded clips. We charge 5,000 for this fee, for this certification. And at the end of the day, all the business that you bring, you would have to pay us a 25% royalty fee if you generate the lead and 35% if we generate the lead. Now we all know that right now, some of you are confined, we are confined, right? So we created a special process or program for the certification during the confinement. So instead of attending a two-day session, you could learn from it from our platform called Sales Brand University. Then we would do four half-day virtual sessions specific for coaches. You would still need to read and summarize those books. You would need to deliver the content. The certification fee would remain the same and the royalty fee would also remain the same. So that's the end. Uh, we did it in 34 minutes, Christophe. So I'd like to see if we can answer a few questions. I wanted to add to your um, last description of how people can be certified that, of course, we are now delivering all our programs online. And therefore, not only can we certify online, but all the programs and that growth program that Patrick described is currently delivered online. I invited everyone uh, to uh, use the chat to ask us some question. I know that there were some uh, questions uh, regarding the uh, claims uh, for someone, I believe, who is based in uh, Germany. They wanted clarification. I think we provided that. Are there any other questions through the chat that we can address? Let's leave a couple of minutes to the possibility that we would have. Well, I'm going to then paste a short survey that we would love for you guys to spend a couple of minutes uh, uh, answering. We want to have uh, feedback from what your experience was of this uh, webinar specific to people interested in the certification. We'd love to know, of course, uh, more about yourself if you are looking at the possibility of becoming a certified persuasion professional. Uh, we thank you very much for your attendance this morning and we hope to hear from many of you. We'll see if we have a few more questions that trickle in. Uh, you will receive, how long does it take to uh, be certified and be up and running? Patrick? Um, it takes a few months typically to learn all this. It depends, you know, it, it works like a language. So you will learn a lot of it early on, but then to become completely fluent takes uh, a little bit longer, but you can expect to be certified in less than two, two months with hard work. Yeah, think of it as a practice of a new sport or an improvement of your uh, tennis game or golf game. If you are Getting to a level of mastery, you typically don't do so in a few hours. There is the learning and there's the practice. Uh, but uh, we've done this uh, with enough partners around the world that we know these skills can be acquired and practiced to become a master. One more question. Well, there is a question which says, you know, why would why? I have to pay 25% royalty? Uh, you know, remember that it took us about 20 years to develop this. 
and uh, you would have instant access to this. Also, remember that the options that we're suggesting are an opportunity for the people that are certified to make more money. In other words, most likely today, you may not have the capabilities to do the research, to do the creatives. We bring you that capability and we bring you another source of potential revenue. The other um, a clarification, which was not made, I think, in the presentation, is anytime there is an upsell opportunity, whether it's research or creative, our commissions are pretty generous. Uh, so we really want to provide additional income opportunity out of the services that you can uh, suggest to your client. Um, also, in many businesses that are somewhat like us, uh, certification fees tend to be much higher and the royalties much lower. But in this case, you're taking greater risk up front by paying more for the certification and less when you sell. In our case, we believe that once you sell, you're basically in the best position to co-pay the price of using our IP. Okay. Let me see if there's a few more uh, uh, questions. Yes. There's another question that says, uh, you mentioned leads could come from you. How does that work? Well, you know, remember where EOS, for example, was a few years ago. You know, EOS, they came up with a book called Traction. And over a period of the last about four years, they were able to build a network of about 350 consultants that are delivering the traction model. So as the founder, Christophe and I, instead of selling our time and our consulting, the idea is that over a transition period, we'll, we'll focus no longer on selling us, but on selling the network and selling people with your experience to do that. So of course, you know, Again, we have already started. Sadly, we started in January 2020, just before the virus. Um, but the idea is down the road, our objective is for us to no longer sell our time, but to sell the power of a network of certified experts. Between Patrick and I, we've uh, delivered uh, nearly 1,500 Vistage presentations. And if some of you today are familiar with Vistage, you must know how vibrant the network of CEOs is around the world. So we have a strong following, not just from our presentations, but also from our readership, 250,000 books. Uh, that's unheard of for most business or uh, marketing books you've ever heard of. Christoph, we have another uh, question on senses um, from Bob Bishop. Hi, Bob. Uh, you, yes, we do stress the importance of vision because this is a very high speed connection that goes directly into the primal, right? But in fact, of all the senses, the one that has the highest bandwidth to the primal brain is the sense of smell. So if you're selling a product where smell can be used, then of course we would highly recommend to use it. In fact, there is a whole branch of marketing now called um, multi-sensory marketing. And we've done tests in the past where we were testing taste and also smell. So we did some neural marketing research on that. So if you can use smell in your marketing approach, very good. In fact, you know, all the real estate brokers know this and that's why they use the smell of fresh baked vanilla cookies when they make you visit a new place. I do not know is fear has a smell though. There's evidence that animals may be able to pick it up. Uh, for, far better than, than humans uh, do. As you know, our sense of smell has deteriorated over hundreds of thousands of years. Um, in, in, but again, uh, Christophe, yes. I remember, I remember reach, uh, reading some research that shows that indeed when we are afraid, we uh, send very specific pheromones which have a specific scent and they signal fear. So a lot of animals can actually detect it based on your body language, but also how you smell. I think now is probably a good time to wrap things up. Uh, we've uh, achieved our objective, which is to deliver you both uh, informative and hopefully educative content by discovering how our model is. And uh, now uh, also the information around the opportunity, we believe it is uh, for you to become certified. So thank you again for attending today. Uh, we expect to hear back from you and, uh, and maybe to collaborate with you. Yes, thank you for attending. Thank you for filling up the feedback. And we will also send you a recording of this webinar. Bye-bye now.